We continued this dedication to detail on the outside too. We caulked everywhere, we taped everywhere, particularly around any window or door opening. We used Tyvek for an air and water preventative, and we also used a foil coated half inch foam board for added insulation, but more importantly, a radiant barrier. Again, the spaces around windows and doors are a weak point, and we spent the time to make sure everything was done properly. And a passive house isn't just about heat loss. Sustainability is everything. Here is our 500 gallon underground cistern that collects water from our gutters. We'll use this water for lawn care, shrubs, and gardening. All right, let's talk a little bit about why windows are so important to a project like this. Um, as you can see, I've spent a tremendous amount of time and money making the home super insulated and super airtight. Um, there's an old saying that the, a chain is only as strong as the weakest link, and that applies to the windows. If we make this home R50 or 60 or what have you, and now we have windows that are only R1s or R2s, when you calculate the square footage of an entire home, you, it's just major heat loss here. So we don't want to invest all this time and money into a project and then skimp out on the windows. So these windows here are called Sirius windows. They're the most energy efficient windows ever made in the United States. Um, so not only is it a great product, but it's also supporting uh, Americans, uh, workers here in, in our country. Uh, but anyway, we'll get into the specifics about them, but it's really a key element of all the things we're going to discuss. Again, this thermal image shows you exactly why you need great windows. There's a couple things that make these windows so great. One is that they have suspended film in between the glass, and this enables them to put different inert gases in between them to create a far better insulated window. They also did some great design work with creating some thermal bridging inside the frames. There's a lot more to just that, but at the end of the day, you have a window that is far superior to anything out there. Important feature that Sirius windows have that I just want to go over is the ability to prevent convection currents. And what I mean by that is if this was a regular window and it was cold outside, um, cold air will basically penetrate through the glass and it will cool the air right here where my hand is. And we know that heat rises, so therefore the cold air will sink. And what happens is the warmer air that's in the room will rise up above. And what that does is create a convection current. So it comes around here like this. And what it essentially does when it's really cold outside is it just sucks all the warm air out to the outside. And you'll feel this if you ever stand in front of a large plate glass window or a door or whatever. You'll get that chill feeling and it'll feel cooler by the window. And that's exactly why that's happening. With serious windows, with super insulated windows, that, that issue is greatly reduced. We're not going to have this air being cooled here where it's going to drop down and create this current and basically draw all the cold air or all the hot air outside. It's, it's a major issue to insulated windows and why it's so important. Another key feature to windows in a passive home is that you will see no double hungs. Um, all the windows are either awnings or casements. And this is because double hungs allow air infiltration and heat loss. So let's take a look at some of the windows I have here on my home. There's more going on here than what meets the eye. For instance, since these windows face the north, these windows are made with a low solar heat gain. However, the windows here on the southern side of the house have a high solar heat gain. This allows the sun to come in and warm the house during the winter months. One feature that a passive house has is that it has uh, overhangs on all sides. So what this does is during the winter, when the sun is at a low angle, the sun can come inside through the glass and warm the home. 
However, in the summertime, when it's hot and we don't want heat, the roof lines will shade the windows and keep us cool. In addition, we've invested in high quality shading materials. In the winter time, we'll use these shades to hold in the heat, but in the summer, we'll use these shades to reflect the heat away. Okay, so here is our ERV, Energy Recovery Ventilation, made by Ultimate Air. This product is fantastic and it really fills in the last puzzle to this project that I've been showing you. We have super insulated windows, we have a super insulated structure, but in doing so, we need to have fresh air inside. Um, we've made it so tight that any off-gassing from, from a couch or carpeting or what have you, or, or shower steam, we have all these things uh, being trapped inside the structure. So we need to ventilate them, but in the same token, we don't want to lose all that warm air or all that cool air depending upon the season. So this is just essentially a heat exchanger, but it also does moisture control, which is another great feature. So the long and the short of it is, is that we're going to, at all times, be bringing in fresh air, fresh air and expelling stale air. But in doing so, we're going to transfer the heat in either direction, depending upon the season, so that we're not reheating it. We, we of course, don't want to bring in very, very cold air in the wintertime and then have to reheat it. So what we do is we warm up that, that cold air coming in with the warm air going out. It's just that simple. With passive homes and ERVs, this is a, is a critical uh, aspect to this, this home. We're in the shower. One major problem that we have with the shower is, of course, steam and heat. Uh, with an ERV or with any of our ERV system, we don't have typical exhaust systems. We're not going to have an exhaust fan in the, in the kitchen. We're not going to have an exhaust fan in the bathroom. We're going to address those issues, those odors or heat or what have you, with the ERV. So the good news is we're going to get rid of this heat and moisture where it's located at the shower, but we're also going to use this heat to our advantage during the winter. So we're going to, we're going to have one of these above the kitchen stove and we're going to have one of these here at the shower. So when we're showering or cooking in passive house, we're going to take this heat, put it into the heat exchanger, and we're going to take the heat and get rid of the moisture and, and get rid of the odors. Another unique feature to the recuperator is the EconoCool summer function. This bypasses the heat exchanger completely at night when it's cool, bringing in cool fresh air without warming it up first from the inside air. So here is our main controlled dial. We'll typically have it in the low position, flowing about 30 or 40 CFM. But we have the ability to increase CFM if household demands require it. And here is the bathroom boost mode timer. This is used for when showering or for any unwanted odors. For the record, these supply and returns aren't just located in bathrooms and kitchens. They are strategically placed throughout a passive house in order to provide a clean air environment. So now we have a home that ranks number one in sustainability, energy efficiency, and air quality. And we were able to do this without increasing the size of our heating and cooling systems. As a matter of fact, our heat loads for the home are less even though we added 650 square feet of living space. So that's passive house construction in a nutshell. But as I alluded to before, passive house and sustainability is a design standard and a mentality. So I've done almost everything possible here to do the right thing, starting with geothermal heating and cooling, solar PV, and solar thermal, seen here. Conservation can be seen everywhere, starting with this waterless urinal and a dual flush toilet. Anywhere we're using water, we're using low flow fixtures. The entire home runs on LED lighting. And all of our appliances and electronics far exceed all Energy Star standards. And with most building materials, we tried to source local materials that were sustainable or recycled. For instance, we used reclaimed lumber from horse farm fencing 
or our floors seen here. We also painted the entire interior with non-toxic zero VOC paint. So once all construction is complete, we're going to have a sustainable home that's net zero, and that includes our electric car. When I first started this video, I entitled the project My Passive House, and, and it is, except it's, it's, it's more of a hybrid, I would say, because I have an existing 1965-year-old Cape Cod and a 2012 Passive House, I guess we'd call it an addition. So it, this home is not going to perform in the exact same manner that a true Passive House that was 100% made uh, in the manner of which I showed you. So keep that in mind when you, when you look at some of the things. For instance, you know, we're not capturing the heat from the cooktop in, in the kitchen. And we obviously have some heat losses that are, that are going on on the old section of the house than what we do in the new. Uh, the other thing is for solar. If you look here, I have a tremendous amount of solar. It's about 7 kW at the moment. And we're going to throw some more up on the new section of the, of the house. But the truth be said, if this was true passive house, the entire thing, this would be complete and utter overkill. We would never need this many modules on the roof. But the reason we do is because we're fighting construction of old uh, and incorporating it with construction of new. So if you had done this entire house in passive house, what we have here for, for solar thermal, what we have here for solar PV, and even what we have here for geothermal, because we heat and cool the house with geothermal, all of this would be complete, over-the-top, overkill. These systems could be, you know, one-fifth, one-tenth the size of that, that they are. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed what I had to show you. And as I said before, this is the future of construction. When you build like this and use 90% less energy, you enjoy that benefit for the lifetime of the structure.
to learn more about sustainability, renewable energy, electric vehicles, or passive house design, contact me at njrenewableenergy.com.